scorn is about the trials and tribulations of a group of young people going through the ups and downs of their relationships and friendships and loves um, during the course of one year. Um, we do have Denise who is a single mother and she's trying to raise her daughter Kayla and dealing with the issues with her ex-boyfriend and Kayla's father, um, Jay, who's pretty much an abusive um, person. It's been abusive for a long time and she's basically dealing with you know, putting him out and, you know, raising her daughter without her father around and trying to build a new life, you know, for her and her child. Inspiration. Well, um, I mean, it dates back to years of my, of hearing stories, you know, I mean, Everywhere you go, especially growing up, you you know hear stories of people going through their relationship problems and stuff like that. So, you know, growing up in Brooklyn, you hear a lot of very interesting stories. And you know, I always felt that you know a lot of those stories was pretty much ripe for um, some decent storytelling, you know, and everything else. So pretty much that's what that's what really got me into it, really to want to do something on, on this. Not to mention, you know having a first film and nobody was going to be able to give me anything like a million, two million, three million dollars to do a, uh, any other type of film. So what they always tell you is, you know, do something cheap, um, you know, less, not a lot of locations, you know, small, little bit of characters and everything else. And, you know, that's what my goal was. and putting them on paper, you know, it's like, you know, you just map it out. And, you know, as, it's like knowing the beginning, knowing the middle. And, you know, my hardest part was actually the end. You know, I really didn't know how it was gonna end per se, but I just continued to write and, you know, write up to the middle, go back to the beginning and so on and so forth. So, you know, everybody has their own their own ways of writing, you know, there's not really one set way because everybody has their own process. But um, my process was pretty much, I just, just went with it. And I, a lot of stories that I've heard, I really never, I never experienced that in the movies. I never really seen too much of that in the movies going on, you know, and um, after I would say about a year, it took me about a year to, to, to write the film and uh, actually write the script. And I was, you know, once I finally got my ending, you know, I looked at it and I actually started knowing what it really was about. And I started to shape it a little bit more and more shape and it took me another, probably another year to shape it into what it could be, what it's supposed to be. And, you know, after I read it, I was like, you know what, this could be an important piece of story to tell. Cause again, you don't hear these type of stories. Well, my approach to, you know, to, the, to the cinematography aspect was, you know, I wanted it gritty. I wanted to tell a, a gritty story, you know. I didn't want it stylized or anything like that. And, um, you know, I did get a lot of what I was looking for. Um, there were certain things that I did want that I couldn't get and, you know, had to compromise. And it was, you know, it wasn't like, it, I didn't feel really good about it, but at the end, you know, when you're putting it together and everything else, it's like, okay, this makes sense and everything else. But um, it's so funny how like, you know, part of the cinematography process, what I've learned, and I'm sure that there'll be others that'll tell me that I'm wrong about it, but this is what I've learned, you know, my experience on this film, is that, you know, in terms of the colors, you have what you, what you shot, and then when you go back into coloring, you know, and the grading and everything else, you know, it really comes out the way you want. Because I got with a colorist and he pretty much, you know, I told him exactly what I was looking for in terms of the grid and the coloring and everything else. And he gave me his input because, of course, he has more experience than I do. And I pretty much was amazed with what he has actually, you know, um, what he did with the footage that I gave him and everything with the finished product and I was like wow you know it was um, very well you know it looks very well you know 
life how I want it to be and what I was looking for. So at least it gave me a, it, it gave me an insight in terms of, you know, what in this technology right now, in this age, you know, what you shoot is not really what's going to come out in the finished product. You know, it's everything in terms of the, the performance, that's one. But in terms of your look, in terms of the feel, the grit, you know, the lighting and everything else, you know, that's something that can actually be tweaked on, you know, in post. And um, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, liberating in a way. We have Sean who is um, just coming off of a nasty breakup with Melissa, who he had a relationship for quite a while. And he's pretty much dealing with um, whether he wants to really be with her or if he wants to start something new with someone else. We have Jamal who is Sean's best friend and he's someone that everybody can relate to. Either you've been that best friend for somebody or somebody's been a best friend to you, giving you advice, help you steer your decision in the right direction or it could get you in trouble. And um, there's a lot of love between the two where pretty much, you know, it goes as far as Jamal um, going the distance to help his friend without his friend even knowing. Well, Tasha and Marcus are a married couple. They've been together since high school and they just had a history of mental and physical abuse. And I pretty much want to show that dynamic between them because um, although everybody else in the picture are singles and, you know, I wanted to have a married couple perspective and um, to sh basically show you what not to do in a married, when, you know, when you're married to somebody, you know, not to destroy somebody's dreams or, you know, um, hinder them from doing whatever they want to do and, and how communication is really key. And pretty much it's all about, you know, the things not to do. Let me ask you something. You call yourself telling the whole world how stop you to think, hey, we damn well know you never interested in seeing her what anyway. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about, Jay. Yeah, Whatever you do for your other kids, but you won't do nothing for Kayla. Yo, I tried to, but you keep the damn door locked. You know so exactly why I keep the door locked, Jay. She's up there looking at you with your other kid right now, spending time, whatever you want to call it. Yo, man, you keep talking that shit. If you're looking for some help, go find out those boys. Oh, boy, what does he have to do with this? I can't Everything, believe you just man. said that. I said it what? <laughs> Don't you ever think that you will ever see my daughter in this lifetime. Oh, so we're going to court now. That would be too easy, and I'm not wasting my time. As a matter of fact, you're not worth two pennies for my baby. I play Denise, who was a single parent, and me and Denise have certain similarities. Not really the abuse, because I didn't really go through abuse. But as far as the type of person she was, we, we're both alike because I probably do some of the same things with my kids and then we're both laid back. As far as the whole experience of playing that character, I actually enjoyed it. This was my first time actually acting. I've done extra roles before, but this was my first real role. And before, I never wanted to act before, and then I got the opportunity, I auditioned, actually had to audition two times. And um, most, of my, my, most of my preparation was on the set. I did scene studies, the director was excellent. I think everybody working together, we helped each other, we kind of taught each other. So it was a great experience and I'm actually looking forward to doing it again. So, uh, what's up? Nothing, you okay? You look a little stressed. Trying to figure out what made you come over? We need to talk. Uh-huh, so, I mean, you gonna tell me or what, man? Why you ask like that? Okay, look, this is all too familiar for me. You come over here, you sit down, you don't even take your damn jacket off. So it's obviously you don't plan on staying long. I mean, 
You got something to tell so, me? Look, I'm, I'm sorry for coming by without letting you know, okay? Okay, so what's up? What's your feelings towards me? Towards us? <laughs> Why? Just answer the question. I'm not answering no question, okay? I mean, you already know the answer to that, Stop man. Stop playing I'm, games, I'm not playing Sean. games. You don't want to play games. I mean, what you want to hear? I think everyone should watch this movie because I think anyone who watches it, everybody comes from different backgrounds, but I think everybody can take something from it. I think it's an excellent movie, and I'm, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in it. If I wasn't in it, I would still watch it. It talks about like relationships, just going through different things in relationships. Everyone, mostly everyone, has been in a relationship, in a relationship, and I think it can really take something from it. And with the abuse, everyone may have, it, have not been in an abusive situation, but as I said before, there's different types of abuse. And um, if you haven't been through abuse, then you know someone who has. So um, you can really take something from it. I feel that everybody who sees, it, sees this will benefit from, you know, the awareness that is, you know, uh, abuse, you know. And we're not just talking about, you know, physical abuse, because that's the one thing that people think about, but the mental and also the effects that abuse has on, on families, friendships, you know, children, you know, that everybody's a victim. They'll see um, that there is not a dark tunnel at the end. You know, there is a, there is a brightness ahead. It's nothing is gonna end in such a somber note. And I made sure that this picture didn't end in a somber note. You know, um, there is a lot of collateral damage in this film and stuff like that, but it that's real life.